Hi guys and welcome to this Chemistry 1.4 Aspects of Selected Elements video. As you can see from the title, this video is focusing on the organisation of the periodic table. And in particular we're going to be looking at the differences between periods and groups and the trends that occur in the periodic table. When it comes to thinking about what this video is covering, hopefully by the end of this video you'll feel comfortable in answering these three main learning objectives. As we've seen in previous videos, we know that chemical elements are arranged in the periodic table, and on the left is an image of the periodic table that is included in your resource booklet at the end of your exam. Additionally, it's important to realise that the periodic table is organised, and it's organised into things called groups and periods. We also know that the elements in the periodic table are ordered by their atomic number, which you can see in the top left hand corner above the chemical symbol for the element. So first of all, when it comes to looking at the periodic table, we need to think about what a period is. And we know that a period is a horizontal row of the periodic table. For example, this is a period here indicated in red. As you can see, there are seven periods of elements on the periodic table. And as part of this video, we're going to look at the trends that occur across a period, which means as you move along the period from left to right, like this. We then need to think about what a group is. And we know that a group on the periodic table is a vertical column of the periodic table, like this, where here you can see I've highlighted group 16. It's important for you to realise that there are 18 groups of elements on the periodic table, and these are shown by the orange arrows. As you can see, the numbers of the groups are labelled here on the periodic table, where group 1 begins on the left and group 18 finishes here on the furthest right. And again, it's important to realise that there are certain trends down a group, so this means as you move from top to bottom like this in the direction of this red arrow. And this is again the focus of this video. So first of all, let's consider the trends that exist across a period. The main trend that you need to know for your exams is the difference between which elements are metals and which elements are non-metals. And although this division can vary between different sources, the provisional line is along this orange line that has been marked on the periodic table to the left. Where as you can see, those elements to the left of this orange border are considered to be metals, and those to the right of the border are considered to be non-metals. When it comes to thinking about the trends down a group, there are three main trends that you need to consider. The first of these is the number of valence electrons within an atom, the second is the similarity of reactions as you move down a group, and the third is changing reactivity as you move down a group. And we're going to look at each of these in turn. First of all, we're going to look at the number of valence electrons in an atom as you move down a group. Atoms of elements in the same group have the same number of electrons in their outermost valence shell. This trend is only true for elements in groups 1, 2, and 13 through to 18. So more specifically, what you need to know is that group 1 elements and hydrogen have one electron in their outer shell. Group 2 and helium have two electrons in their outer shell. And atoms of elements in group 13 have three electrons in their outer shell. And as you can see, this pattern builds where group 14 elements have four electrons, group 15 has five, and so on. So let's go through an example together using group 2. Using this trend, we know that all atoms of elements in group 2 must have two electrons in their outermost shell. So as you can see, beryllium is at the top of group 2 and it has an atomic number of 4. This means it has 4 electrons total and these are arranged in a 2-2 fashion. Moving vertically down group 2, magnesium then has an atomic number of 12 with 12 electrons and an electron arrangement of 2-8-2. Moving further down still, we can see calcium has an atomic number of 20 and 20 electrons total. These electrons are arranged in a 2-8-8-2 fashion. And as you can see, all of the elements in group 2 have atoms that have 
two electrons in the outer valence shell. So now let's move on to the second trend that occurs as you move vertically down a group in the periodic table. And this is the trend of similarity of reactions. And so the trend that you must memorize for your exam is that metals in the same group are involved in similar reactions. And the reason for this is because they have the same number of outer valence electrons. And we just saw that before. Having the same number of outer valence electrons means that the atoms of metals in a group are going to react in a similar way. And this is in order to lose those valence electrons, which they have the same number of, in order to gain a full outer shell. And as we've seen in previous videos, we know this makes the atom more chemically stable. So now let's go through an example using group 1 to illustrate this trend. Group 1 elements are all going to have one electron in their outer shell. And we can see that here with lithium, which has an electron arrangement of 2-1. Additionally, we can see that sodium has an atomic number of 11 and an electron arrangement of 2-8-1. And this means that both sodium and lithium are involved in similar reactions in order to lose that one electron to gain a full outer shell and be more chemically stable. Something you do need to memorize is that lithium and sodium react with oxygen, water, and hydrochloric acid, and they do this to lose this one valence electron and form ions that have a plus one charge. The final trend that you need to know is that as you move vertically down a group, the reactivity of the metals increases. And the reason for this is that moving down a group means that the atoms gain an extra shell of electrons. And we can see that with group two, where as you move from beryllium to magnesium, a whole nother shell of eight electrons is gained. And the same thing happens as you move vertically downwards from magnesium to calcium. And ultimately, gaining these electrons means that the outer valence electrons are going to become further away from the positive nucleus to which they're attracted. And this means that they're going to be more easily lost, and therefore the metal is going to be more reactive. And as you can imagine, increasing reactivity of these metals means that the reactions they're involved in become faster and more violent. Here you can see the electron arrangement for beryllium. And as you move vertically downwards from beryllium to magnesium, we can see there's a whole nother shell of electrons gained. And these valence electrons here are getting further away from that positive nucleus. The same thing happens again when you move from magnesium to calcium vertically down group two, where another whole shell of eight electrons has been gained and those valence electrons are becoming further and further apart from that positive nucleus. And this simply means they're going to be more easily lost and therefore calcium is more reactive than magnesium, which is more reactive than beryllium. As with all rules, there is an exception to this reactivity trend, where you must memorize that the elements in group 17 are less reactive as you move down the group. And the reason for this is that it's harder to gain an electron as you move down group 17. And this is because there are more energy levels or shells of electrons gained. You can see that as you move from fluorine to chlorine, a whole nother shell of eight electrons is gained. And the same thing happens as you move from chlorine to bromine. And this means that it's harder for an electron to join on to that valence electron shell because the distance that that electron is away from the positive nucleus is getting larger and larger. So it's harder to attract an electron to jump into that valence shell. And this means that the elements get less reactive as you move down the group. So why do different ions have different charges? Well, as you already know, atoms gain or lose electrons in order to form an ion with a full valence shell. And this ultimately means that the ion becomes more stable. Atoms with three or fewer electrons in their outer shell are going to lose those electrons to form positive ions. And now we know using our first trend as you move vertically down a group that these atoms are going to be the atoms of elements in groups 1, 2 and 13 because we know that the elements in group 1 have one valence electron, those in group 2 have two valence electrons, and those in group 13 have three. So elements in these groups are going to lose electrons to form ions that are positive. Additionally, we know that atoms with five or more electrons in their outer shell are going to gain electrons and form negative ions. And now we know that these are going to be the atoms of elements in group 15, 16, and 17. 
because atoms of elements in these three groups have valence electrons that are over half full, and therefore to gain a full shell they're going to gain electrons. So that brings us to the end of the video. In terms of what you need to take away from this video, you need to be able to explain the trends of elements across a period on the periodic table, where this is talking about the differences between metals and non-metals, and you need to be able to explain the trends of an element going down a group on the periodic table, where we talked about three main trends, these being the number of valence electrons, similarity of reactions, and reactivity. Finally, you need to be able to explain why different ions have different charges, again because all three of these topics are big end-of-year exam questions. Thanks for listening.